Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 26, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you're looking for a system to manage alerts and cases in your SOC, uh, Tom has a great little diary for you today looking at the Hive. That's a very famous and a frequently used system for this. And then a DFIR Iris. These uh, two systems are both open source. They do support alert queues. They have case management uh, playbooks, everything you need in order to basically have some robust uh, alert and case management uh, for your SOC. So quick introduction here to in particular uh, DFIR Iris and uh, with links for more information. And yesterday I mentioned how GitLab released version 16.0.1. It fixes a critical CVSS score 10 vulnerability. It's a directory traversal vulnerability. And uh, well, uh, one of the questions, of course, always how it's going to be exploited. Well, we do have a proof of concept exploit available now. One of the dependencies here is that uh, the project that you are actually submitting a comment with an attachment to has to be nested in at least five groups. This then triggers the directory traversal, essentially a URL encoded slash that's not properly escaped. And with that, an attacker is able to read arbitrary files from the system. The proof of concept just reads the Etsy password file. So this is now definitely a vulnerability that you do want to patch before you leave for the weekend. Yes, it has some dependencies like these nested uh, projects and such, but I wouldn't count on you finding all the projects and all the nested relationships to adequately make sure that you're not vulnerable. So it's probably just easier to apply the patch. And talking about vulnerabilities with proof of concepts, Salt Labs released an other block, the second one in a series about OAuth vulnerabilities. This one is for CVE 2023-28131. It fixes a vulnerability or it addresses a vulnerability in the Expo framework, a popular framework that's used to implement OAuth. The actual vulnerability was fixed a month ago. Salt Labs already discovered the vulnerability and then notified Expo and now waited a month to actually release details. But these are sufficient details to actually exploit the vulnerability. So if you are using Expo to implement uh, OAuth, better make sure that you have this particular vulnerability fixed. Even if you are not using Expo, but you are implementing OAuth, still a great uh, series of blogs here to read. Salt does a good job in actually going through some of the fairly complex details of OAuth and what could possibly go wrong. And we've got a couple other noteworthy vulnerabilities. Mytel MyVoice released an advisory 23-0004. It fixes a vulnerability that does allow a local users. It has to be connected uh, to the internal network uh, to execute arbitrary scripts. No authentication required. And the link fixed uh, two flaws in its uh, DVU8 network management suite. Uh, these flaws do allow authentication bypass as well as arbitrary code execution. The first one, CVE 2023-32165, is the remote code execution vulnerability. And then the second one, CVE 2023 32169. This is the authentication bypassed due to some hard coded cryptographic keys. Originally, these vulnerabilities were reported to D Link by the Trend Micro Survey Initiative. So, updates are now available. Please apply them. 
And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Tell your enemies about it. The more are listening, the more likely I am continue to go to keep this going. So please let everybody know. And thanks to everybody that sort of reached out with any tips about stories. If I missed anything, uh, please let me know. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.